welcome to our virtual studio visit with Tandem Press on the campus of Uni University of Wisconsin-Madison. I'm Jenny Gibbs, Executive Director of the IFPDA and the IFPDA Foundation. These programs are part of Print Month, which is held in conjunction with the IFPDA Fine Art Print Fair online through Sunday, November 1st. You'll find it by going to the IFPDA website. This is the fifth in our series of six Zoom visits to the studios of some of the fine art print publishers among the 150 members of the IFPDA. On Saturday, for our final program, we'll be traveling to Bucks County, Pennsylvania for a visit with Durham Press, where we'll learn about the wood blocking process for a project with Jacob Hashimoto, among other things. Today, we have the great pleasure of being in the hands of Paula Panjenko and her team at Tandem Press, who will be joined by artist Jeffrey Gibson. Paula is a past president of the IFPDA and a current member of the IFPDA Foundation Board. If you were listening to our conversation with collectors Les Garfield and Jordan Schnitzer yesterday, you already know that she's a much loved and highly respected member of the printmaking and print collecting communities. We at the IFPDA hope that you've enjoyed watching these programs as much as we've enjoyed putting them together. We've had many thousands of people joining us from an astonishing list of 28 countries. If you're joining from the US, please vote. We also hope that you'll find some time to explore Tandem Press and the other presenters in the IFPDA Fine Art Print Fair, which you'll find on the IFPDA website. We have the Q&A open throughout. If you have a question, please type it into the Q&A box. And with that, I will turn over the program to Paula Penjenko. Welcome to Tandem Press. In these extraordinary times, I would like to thank the IFPDA for or organizing two virtual print fairs this year. I also want to recognize the amazing programming which has taken place. I myself has, have learned so much for, from each and every presentation. I would like to thank the IFPDA board members under the leadership of David Tunick. But finally, I want to acknowledge the exceptional and tireless work of Jenny Gibbs, the executive director, who along with her colleague, Shari Young, has performed an incredible and remarkable feat for the IFPDA this year. We're so grateful for all that she has done since joining the organization a little over a year ago. Thank you, Jenny, and thank you, Shari. And now I will begin the program standing in front of a beautiful Judy Pfaff print, which you will see more of in the gallery. Tandem Press was founded in 1987 by Bill Wiggy, a professor at the art department, a distinguished artist and papermaker, and a man with an extraordinary imagination. We are affiliated with the Department of Art in the School of Education at the UW Madison. Tandem Press offers an unparalleled education experience where graduate students assist curators and master printers to create and promote artwork by internationally renowned artists. As one of only three professional presses connected to a university in the United States, Tandem Press offers an exceedingly rare environment for pushing the boundaries of printmaking. The University of Wisconsin-Madison's stated mission is threefold, to teach, to conduct research, and to provide public service. Tandem shares this mission by teaching students the necessary skills for printmaking, by undertaking research into new and to traditional printmaking techniques, and by conducting outreach programs to help educate the public about art in general and printmaking in particular. Our challenge at Tandem is to be a leader in education and a business in an educational setting. The origin of the name Tandem Press is that Tandem celebrates the collaboration of the artists and the printers working in Tandem to produce original fine art prints. Today you will meet the staff members of Tandem Press, but I would like to introduce you to the man behind the camera, Seth Klikan. He is our preparator, exhibition designer, and as you can see, an amazing multitasker. Tandem is located in a 19th century building on the east side of Madison, three miles from the UW campus. The building was a roundhouse where the trains were turned around and freight trains continue to pass by our building on a daily basis. 
We hope this will not happen in the next hour. They are rather noisy. Tandem has brought over 90 nationally and internationally recognized artists to work at the press. Um, included among them have been such stellar names as Derek Adams, Suzanne Caporel, Robert Cottingham, Jim Dine, Jeffrey Gibson, who you will meet today, Sam Gilliam, Nicola Lopez, Judy Pfaff, behind me here, Alison Saar, Micheline Thomas, and Sean Scully. This is a short list, but please visit our website to see a complete listing. The Chase Museum of Art at the University of Wisconsin-Madison is the archive for Tandem Press and holds one impression of every edition by the visiting artists. And during an artist's residency, artists give public lectures at the Chasing Museum on their artwork. Artist residencies can last 10 days or longer, and some artists return on several occasions to complete complicated projects. People often ask, why do I like working at Tandem Press? And I tell them, that I learn something new every day. The creative process is an extraordinary privilege for all of us to observe here. In the early 1990s, Bill Weeby collaborated with Sam Gilliam, who was actually the first artist to work at the press. And they created a 500 yard print on fabric, which was rolled out on the frozen ice of Lake Mendota in January so that Wisconsin television could fill the entire image. At Tandem, we can enable the artists to use many printmaking techniques, including lithography, etching, woodblock, silk screen, letterpress, and combinations of all of the above. As you will be going into the studio shortly, the printers can answer many additional questions on the techniques that are utilized. Following a residency and upon satisfactory, the satisfactory completion of an RTP by the artist, which is a right to print proof, or a BAT from the French bonatire, which means a good pull, or as you may have heard from Crown Point Press, OKTP, OK, OK to print. However, on one occasion, the artist Robert Stackhouse signed a proof here at Tandem entitled PDC, Pretty Damn Close. The master printers then print the editions. Since 1987, over 350 students have been involved in all aspects of the operation. We've had students from the art department who assist the master printers, students from the School of Business who advised on branding and marketing, and more, more recently, thanks to the generosity of our donors, we have been able to fund project assistantships for two to three art department printmaking students to work at the press. These students receive a salary, benefits, and full tuition. We also engage in outreach, Tandem participates in print fairs nationwide. We publish an annual newsletter, which is sent to 6,000 patrons. On a bi-monthly basis, we publish an e-newsletter, and we have also produced artist catalogs. Marketing takes place on Facebook and Instagram on a daily and weekly basis. We also give tours in the community to school and university groups, and in the summer, we organize printmaking workshops. We do a couple of ancillary events to encourage more clients and friends of the press to join us on a more regular basis. We commenced a monthly jazz series five years ago, featuring jazz students from the UW Madison School of Music. And six concerts take place annually at the press itself, exposing this audience to the world of printmaking. Unfortunately, this has been delayed or postponed, I should say, in the time of COVID. Tandem also organizes all the airports at the Dane County Regional Airport so that they can see Tandem prints in, in the, coming into the city. And we hold a wine auction to benefit student scholarships. At the close, before I introduce you to the rest of our incredible team, 
I just want to thank all the collectors, the artists, the supporters, the graduate students on behalf of Tandem Press. You are our ambassadors. We couldn't do it without you. And now let's move on to the main part of the show. I am about to walk into the gallery with Seth following me with his camera and introduce you to one of our curators, Sona Pastel Danishkar. Many of you may have also dealt with Mishka, but she has been feeling unwell for the last couple of days. And so it's over to Sona to give you a tour of our existing show at the gallery. Sona. Hello, I'm Sona Pastel Danishkar. I'm one of the curators here at Tentum Press. Um, I'm going to take a quick moment with you to show you our gallery and the exhibition that we have up right now, which is um, our show, our virtual exhibition of, at, with the ISPDA in Berkeley. Um, so we're going to walk over here. I'm going to highlight a couple pieces. Um, and these ones here are some brand new um, editions, some brand new prints that we made with Curtis Derek Adams. Um, we released six new editions with him um, in September. Um, and we first started working with him in 2019. This one here is called Party Guest One, and it's from his We Came to Party and Plan series. Um, it's based off of a painting in that series. Um, and when we decided to work on this project with Derek, um, we talked about using, utilizing different printmaking methods to create it. We often use a lot of different methods um, in our prints. And so this one is a combination of screen print, relief printing, and collage. So you can see the background and the figure, that is all screen prints. And then the hat is relief print. It was done on our Vandercook press. It's got nine different colors on it. And after the printing was done, it was cut out to shape and then collage to the top. The shirt and the figure is also screen printed. It's an archival book cloth that was um, printed with a number of different runs to create the dot pattern. And then that was also cut out to shape and then collaged onto the surface. So you can see it's a quite a difficult and complicated print. Um, we love a challenge here at Tandem Press. It's something that we're known for. It's kind of taking on these unique projects where we're combining a lot of different methods to, to do um, the prints. So this was a really beautiful piece that we um, are very excited to release. Here we have Boyan Swan Float. Um, it's from Derek Adams' series, of his floater series, um, a, a whole series of paintings um, that were recently, along with the We Came to Party and Plan series, uh, in an exhibition at the Hudson River Museum in Yonkers, New York. Um, this was, again, a very complicated print, although it looks maybe uh, simple from far away. Once you get closer, you can actually see that each of the colors in here, this is all um, what's called a puzzle block woodcut. So each, or, or woodblock print, excuse me. Each color that's here is um, actually a block, a tiny block that's been cut out separately, inked up, and then laid back down into the matrix. And then the paper is placed on top and then they go through. So we've actually got 68 different um, puzzle cut woodblock pieces to create this print. Once that part of the printing was finished, then screen print was added as well. So the parts of the swan, the black hair, the boy's hair, his eye, his pupil, his nostril, and his adorable toenails were all screen prints. Um, and then similar to Party Guest One, the bathing suit is again the archival book cloth that was printed with screen print and then for that pattern and then cut out and collaged on top. And it creates a beautiful depth. And these, again, are just two of the six editions that we released with um, Derek Adams just last month. Um, if you're interested, you can find them on our website, tandempress.wisc.edu. And now we're going to walk through the gallery. I'm going to show you a few of our prints by Judy Fath. And I'm also going to point out some of the other works that we have in the exhibition right now. This is an artist named Major. An Irish, um, Irish artist that we've been working with since 2014. And these are some of his newest prints that we collaborated with him to make just this, uh, a few months ago. We also have um, the 
was printed by Judy Pfaff, and so I'll, I'll speak a bit about these. Um, uh, but I'll also mention that we have works by Alison Saar, Nicolene Thomas, Leslie Dill, Robert Kelly, many other artists in our exhibition. So again, you can find those on our website. We have a virtual exhibition um, on our website, sandopress.wisp.edu. Um, and you can also view all of these on our Hertzy IFPDA page. So we bring visiting artists into Tampa to create editions of prints, as Paula mentioned before. Um, we work in all different methods of printmaking. Um, we're set up pretty much to do everything um, that an artist would want to try in terms of printmaking in their studio. We've done many um, uh, traditional methods, but then also a lot of um, contemporary and new methods. Um, and a wonderful example of this is, uh, again, artworks by Judy Pfaff. Um, Judy, we worked with since the early 1990s. She's a sculptor and installation artist uh, based in upstate New York. Um, and because of her background in sculpture and installation work, she likes to create more than just a print on paper generally. When she comes to work with us, she likes to play with layers of paper, she likes to play with different materials. Um, and so these ones are really lovely um, examples of that. This one here is called The Three Fishes. It's a woodcut print, um, but Judy developed this really interesting technique. While the ink was drying, she brushed colored silver leaf into the ink so that it adhered to the back. Um, and so it creates this really beautiful sort of metallic sheen. When the print was finished drying, she then took the entire thing, flipped it over, and then used fabric dye and painted on the back of the print. And because the paper is so thin, what you're seeing is the washes of color are actually the dye that's soaking from the back to the front and creating these really beautiful atmospheric effects. Judy's a very prolific artist and she's a very prolific printmaker. When she comes to work with us in our studio, she usually works on multiple projects at one time, um, hardly ever just one print. Um, and for this last series, which this one is a part of, I believe she came three or four times on separate occasions to work on the series. Um, we released a number of works with her all at once in 2017. Judy also likes to design the frames to go with her pieces, so that's why you're seeing this beautiful um, silver leaf frame on all of her work. Um, and then I'm going to point out one more print before we uh, head upstairs. I just wanted to, again, point out this one here. This is called Foreseeable Future. And it's an intaglio print, but it also has these beautiful aluminum discs that have been printed with blend rolls, um, or they've been uh, blend rolled <laughs> themselves, and then adhere to the paper. So again, Judy likes to really play with materials. She likes to sort of work with soft and hard, you know, light and dark. Um, and this is a really beautiful example of that, where you have a very thin, beautiful Kozo paper that has the print on it, but then you have this hard metal that's been um, adhered to the backing. And of all of our artists, we probably have the most work by Judy, again, because she is so prolific and creates so much work when she comes to our studio. So now we are going to head upstairs with Rachel and give you a view of our curatorial area. Thank you very much, Sona. So if you have any questions, uh, you can send them in. Or we will answer them later on. <laughs> Sounds good. Stoner has been here for several years and has added so much to our organization. And uh, we will now move up to the curatorial area where she actually usually spends a lot of time. So we have two entrances to our studio. This is the front entrance when you come right in the front door. And then there's an entrance in the back. And I actually am going to go through the studio and meet you in the back following Rachel's tour. Rachel is a, can you come out of here, Rachel? Rachel <laughs> is our financial manager. She's an artist in her own right. She runs workshops for us. She's also an events coordinator for Chandra, another multitasker. Hello. So this is our curatorial area, and it's our office space, but also we're able to display all of our artwork up here as well. 
So I'll just mention a few pieces as we walk through. Right here, we have two pieces that we created with Jim Dine. The one on the left that you're looking at right now was from 2015. And then the piece on the right is from 2013. These are two of three hearts that we created with Jim Dine. We're able to display artwork, and this is also our storage area as well. So you'll see some new flat files where we keep all of the prints when we're not able to show them off. And we've got some work out right now that I thought I would just mention. Here is a piece by Leslie Dale that has some gold leaf details and some red details. It's always nice to show works off without the glass in front of them. So this is where we were able to pull prints out and show them to people when they stop in. And this is a Robert Stackhouse piece that is eight and a half feet long. It's one of our larger works that we have. And then I'll mention a few more pieces on this wall. Here are two um, more dimensional prints that we've done with Leslie Dill. On the left, there is relief printed on um, paper that is folded around clay and then some thread and silk organza that created the um, attire for this piece. And then we've got a woodcut on muslin with dyed horsehair. That was all stitched in by hand. And then next to that, we have two woodcuts by Alison Saar. And the one on the right was printed on seed sacks, linen seed sacks. And then we have a piece by Dan Rizzi right here. It is a relief and woodcut and collage and shin collet. And another relief by Alan Shields on handmade paper. This one's really thick. So there's a lot of dimension to this piece. So if you're ever in Madison, Wisconsin, please stop in. We are open to the public and we'd love to have you come in and browse. We had a question about additions, about the addition sizes in general. Um, what are the addition sizes in general for Derek, for Judy, for Allison, any of the projects that you've shown us? It's a huge range, it kind of depends um, on the artist and the piece, really. So there's a range, I wouldn't say for Derek, it's probably around between 30 and 50 for him. And with Judy, I I know we've done some editions of 12 with her and some of them go up to 30 as well, but it's kind of all over the map with the prints. It depends on each piece. Great, thanks. And then Seth will take you downstairs to see the studio. Thank you, Rachel, and welcome to our fantastic studio. And I am now going to introduce Jeffrey Gibson, who is joining with our printers, Joe Fry and Jason Rule. And shortly you will meet Patrick Smichek, and actually one of the graduate students who works here. Welcome, Jeffrey, from Hudson, New York. We're thrilled to have you here. Thank you. Thanks and, for oh, thank you. 
In January 2020, Geoffrey made his first visit to Tandem. Geoffrey is a multidisciplinary artist based in Hudson, New York, and is a citizen of the Mississippi Band of Choctaw Indians and is of Cherokee heritage. He was born in Colorado and spent his childhood in Germany, South Korea, and England. His work reflects his experiences living in multicultural environments and is influenced by indigenous traditions, queer identity, pop culture, politics, abstract painting, music, and language. He often utilizes objects associated with indigenous culture and ceremonies, such as leather beadwork, textiles, garments, drums, and metal jingles. His art practice spans across numerous disciplines from abstract painting to painting on hide, meticulously beaded punching bags, sculpture, installation, video art, and live performance. And we are so happy that he is making work at Tandem Press. He has received many awards. The most recent award in 2019, he was named a MacArthur Fellow. I'm now going to turn this over to our studio manager and master printer, Jason Roo. Thank you. So the first thing that we're gonna show, we have two projects that we are working on with Jeffrey. Uh, one is a print, Power, 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 that is relief and screen print. And so Joe is going to ink up the last block that will go into uh, this jig right here, and then he will print this run. And then after he prints the run, we can show you what the print looks like with the two relief runs on it and then also what it will look like once the screen print is added. Um, and then maybe while Jeff, um, while Joe is inking that block up, Jeffrey, if you wanted to maybe talk about, you know, you're a multi-disciplinary artist, what it's like to work in printmaking versus some of the other media that you deal with? Um, sure. I, um, <clears throat> you know, I've been invited to work with numerous times in the past, and I've really, not ever really found a way that I felt like it um, kind of reflected, you know, the rest of my practice, um, which over the past decade has really become very craft oriented pattern text and trying to like find ways for those to come together. Um, and I think as the work has gotten more graphic and I think the text, um, you know, has kind of found, I found my voice of how I use text and words. And um, so now, I don't know, I think I felt more comfortable. And even when I first got to Tandem, you know, a lot of it is about that kind of trust that is built between the artist and the printers. And um, I felt immediately comfortable at Tandem. And um, I also felt like the printers were not looking to really you know, do anything more than kind of find the best ways to produce what I was envisioning. And so actually this piece, the power, power, power print, um, actually the idea has shown up a couple of different times in my work. Um, I did want to work with the idea of a rainbow, which is something that I think can come across as almost very light, but in other bodies of work that I've made, um, I try to use color to represent, you know, communities, people, uh, movements. So this idea of the rainbow and how it relates to not only LGBTQ rights and um, humanity movements, but, um, you know, it's also just generally been used as a symbol of unity. And so there was a bag, a punching bag, which some people might be familiar with my punching bag series that was made in, I believe, 2017, that was titled Power, Power, Power. And it was literally um, bands of color of beadwork with the word power in it. And, you know, it's very obvious um, when you have the words, you know, black power, white power, but then you add red power, purple power, green power. And with this print in particular, I wanted to add brown power. So that's one of the, the colors that you'll see here. But go ahead, sorry, I'm, no, the, we're gonna hear a sound. <laughs> Thank you. 
So, um, so I think when I was thinking about printmaking now, I'm really looking for like the things that I feel like translate, you know, pretty seamlessly into a two dimensional work. And in fact, when the bead panels are made here in the studio for the punching bags, they actually are made in large rectangles. Um, they're stitched together very similarly and then they're wrapped around the punching bag and then stitched on. So I don't know, I think in that way, it translated pretty easily to me. In fact, it's almost at a similar scale of what you know the beadwork might be for a punching bag. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I think, I mean, I love the scale of this print. That was another thing that was important to me when we were talking is just about um, the kind of saturation. Um, there's some subtleties to it. We played with gloss, we played with also, there's a micaceous um, ink in there that in person, you know, there's a difference in terms of like, when you look at it from a distance that it reads really um, almost like this amazing flat saturated color. And then as you get up close, there's subtleties that are there with, with inks. And then the word power, you know, the word power I've actually used in numerous times, but I think, like I said, when you put it behind, you know, brown power, pink power, blue power, green power, red power, white power, um, the colors, they kind of cease to only be formal and they begin to take on larger cultural meaning. We had a question wondering when this series will be released. Uh, so we are in production uh, right now and we hope to be done kind of mid-November and then we will ship to Jeffrey's studio for him to sign the prints. So I think by the time they go there and come back, um, we're probably looking at the first of the year a little bit later. Great. And so, yeah. And so this would, you know, this would be the first run and Joe would run through that every day and get however many prints he could get. Um, but he would take the print all the way through in the first run. And then the second run is the other block with the uh, seven other stripes that would then fill in the gaps on that print. And then next to it, we actually have the RTP that Jeff signed when he was in the studio. Um, and so this is what the product will look like at the end. One of our uh, viewers is wondering uh, what kind of paper it is and if it is oil-based ink. Uh, so it is, uh, Reeves is the paper and then it is oil-based ink. Mm -hmm. Perfect, thank you. Jason, are you able to hold it up? Yeah. Yeah. And I just, I really like, I think sometimes with print, when my work, like it, I don't know, like it didn't have a kind of necessarily material presence to it, but I will say like this print in person, it's, um, I really love it because I want to look at it, you know, from the sides, um, from a distance and up close. And yeah, I feel like the color is just spot on. Thank you. One of our um, viewers is wondering what you do with the matrices after. It depends. Most of the time they're destroyed. Um, occasionally, because of our educational outreach that we incorporate into the press, we like to keep some of those um, matrix items to show when people come on tours. Um, or occasionally, we've also given them to the Chazen Museum, who's our archive. But yeah, traditionally, we would um, destroy the blocks after everything is done. Great. Um, we have a question specifically for Jeffrey. Mm -hmm. um, wondering about your image making process. Do you start with sketches, paintings, or photos, and how do you communicate these with the master printers? Well, um, with these, I believe, and Jason, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like with the power print, we started something before I arrived. You know, we had like a kind of dialogue going um, to try to think about translation of works, and there was a couple of proposals before this that I think ultimately um, 
I think in conversation, what I realized was it wasn't really, I feel like with print, you want to epitomize the qualities of your work, you know? So I really had to come to a point to realize, okay, it's my use of color. Um, this is a pattern that you'll see repeated both in paintings, you'll see it repeated in beadwork, um, and also the relationship between text and, and abstraction. Um, that kind of brought us into this place. But there was a, there was a good two or three kind of versions of trying to get here um, before we arrived at, at this print. And um, once we were there, then, you know, it was just, um, I think it was a digital file that I put together. And then Jason would advise and, and give some feedback on like how that would translate into print. And then, and then eventually we just did a proof. Yep, that all sounds how it went down. Um, <clears throat> yeah, because traditionally we like to have um, something that is kind of in progress or on the wall when we have the artists come in, just because the amount of time that people can spend in the studio is usually about a week. So uh, we feel it's kind of nice to have something for them to respond to when they get here um, instead of spending those first couple of days trying to get to that point. Yeah, yeah. And also, I actually didn't know about, I, I knew I originally approached wanting to do a woodcut, but I actually was unfamiliar with the, the press and the matrix um, kind of cutouts. That, that was something that was new to me. Um, Gregory Santos is wondering if the text will be relief printed as well, or if that's screen print. The text is screen print, and we can actually show you right over here the the print in process with some of the screen layers that have been added. Yeah, that's so wild. And so this side was printed. Uh, and all the text was printed in white so that then these colors could sit up on top of that white. So you can see, you know, how it's slowly starting to build up. And then power will be printed on this side in white, and then the same process will happen again. And you can see there with the camera, there's the difference in sheen um, between the inks, which, um, I was really excited about. And there's a slight texture in, the, in what, what's reading as that really dark gray, almost black color. We have a question about the, the wood blocks. Um, are the individual wood cut blocks laser cut? Yes, they are laser cut. We actually walked past uh, the laser that we have. And after we're kind of done with the next part of this, we can show you, we have a technology center that we've added in the past year because uh, we, we were given a, a really wonderful, generous gift by one of our um, supporters. And so one of the things we got was a laser engraver. So yeah, the, all of those blocks were cut with the laser. And then the next uh, piece that we're gonna talk about is a drum that we're working on with Jeffrey. And so we just put on the wall, the different steps of the print and then at the end, you'll see what the final print looks like on the drum. So nuts. And so the, this is all screen print. And Patrick will show you the final run that gets added to a drum in a little bit after we take a look at this. And, and I have to say, like this is, is very similar to the way that a painting might come together in the studio in terms of, you know, I work a lot with glazes, a lot of graphic language, and glazing over on top of to sort of build color and get a real translucency kind of kind of color um which i think and the rawhide itself which is stretched over the drum um is translucent already so yeah it's kind of it's perfect And even though we had talked about doing a drum, I remember thinking, I was like, we're not gonna do a drum. That just seems too crazy. <laughs> like, and then um, I'm really glad that everyone at Tandem was on board to go for it. And I think it's, it's beautiful. Yeah, and I think Patrick can probably talk about while he's um, you know, getting the ink set up for this, the kind of hiccups that occur on printing on a, yeah. um, kind of a three-dimensional surface versus printing on paper, which is the majority of what we're doing in the shop. 
there's never any hiccups actually. Everything always goes smooth. <laughs> um, yeah, so printing on a you know three-dimensional object uh, is challenging enough, um, but also printing on rawhide has um, you know when you first look at it, you know it looks completely flat and perfect, but Really, when you're trying to print on something like that, you notice that there's a bunch of dips and um, ridges to it. So um, you find a way to work with those um, aspects of um, something like that. And uh, yeah, there's always a way to figure it out. So, uh, so yeah, I'm adding ink to my screen here. Uh, this is going to be a five color blend. And I'm adding fairly similar um, splashes of color here. So this is all acrylic ink. And I should also say one of the things about working on rawhide, um, you know, and I've worked with rawhide for years at this point, and um, we work with an acrylic medium that we seal the hide with because um, otherwise it remains porous and um, continues to kind of move. So we do the best we can to stabilize it. So the drums have all been sealed with acrylic um, so that the ink can actually sit on the surface even. So I built this um, jig to hold the drum. Um, since the surface of the drum is raised, or the drum itself is three inches tall. Um, wanted something to be able to hold it while I print because um, the registration on these drums is uh, needs to be very precise. So um, we've created um, this jig to hold the drum and uh, we have a registration system set up that goes with our screens. So now I'm gonna kind of blend these five inks together. Um, it takes a few pulls. I'll print on paper first before I ultimately print on the drums, um, just to make sure all the ink is fully blended. And I've added a little bit of thickener in my ink because with so many colors in such a small area, um, the colors want to really migrate into each other quite rapidly. And the thickener kind of slows that process down a little bit. We have a question wondering what type of silk screen ink you use on rawhide. What was the question? What uh, type of ink you use on the rawhide? Um, so any acrylic um, will work. We use a combination of TW Graphics Ink and Speedball Inks. So first I'm going to print on paper. Okay, so I'll print a couple of these. And you can see the blend is kind of not quite blended yet, but it's getting there. So we'll set that there. <clears throat> getting a little bit more blended. All right. I got a question for Jeffrey about the drums. I'm wondering if you will be activating them, and I assume that they mean through performance. Um, I think these not. Um, we do um, for we we have made lots of drums for performance. In fact, I've been working on some video projects during quarantining, and um, one of the video projects involved making new drums that were hand painted. And those have all been played. But I think these um, these are part of a series of um, framed drum pieces that I've done here. 
Um, and they're really, um, I really, what I really like about them is how much when they're framed, the fact that they're a drum, you almost don't even realize right away. Um, you just think that it's sort of a, a round framed canvas. Um, the first of the series were diptychs and were very much influenced by Felix Gonzalez Torres, the, um, the clock. And so, um, so, but these are, these are independent ones and um, will not be played. That's pretty close. So what I'm going to do now is print on a piece of mylar. Um, that will be kind of show me where the ink is going to be sitting above the drum. And if I need to slightly uh, alter the position of the drum, I can at that point. So. Looks pretty good. Just going to adjust the top a little bit. Just double check, make sure everything's lined up. So Patrick, if at any point this one didn't work out, like, can you go back at all? Or is it just sort of like, like, oh, it didn't work out? <laughs> yeah, so uh, fortunately, um, the, uh, the edition is complete at this point. Um, this yeah. was actually okay. one that didn't work out. Um, but if there were be, to, uh, for instance, on this layer, um, I could print a white circle. Yeah. Just, it would take a few layers, but I could get there. Right. And um, then I can print on top of that. So I'm so excited. I haven't actually seen one in person yet. Yeah. The edition turned out absolutely gorgeous. So we can't wait to get them to you. Yeah. Patrick, you have lots of fans out here um, wondering how long it took you to engineer that process and also um, complimenting you on your jig and wondering if you have a carpentry background. <laughs> well, that's, that's quite a lot. Uh, how long did it take to engineer this jig? Um, I think, you know, just when I first started printing drums with Jeffrey, this was um, June of 2019. And um, when I talked to Joe and Jason about the project um, and I was able to see a drum, then I could start thinking about um, how I could print on it. So, um, I mean, the, the jig, you know, I'm appreciated, but it, I feel like it is a bit crude. You know, it's only made out of like two by fours and stuff like that. But um, it's also, um, I guess it's kind of evolved since that first project where um, I'm now using um, felt on the inside. Um, to every drum is slightly different. So, um, and also, as you can see, um, the bottoms of the drum um, has these um, leather straps. So the bottoms are, are very like uneven. So the felt really helps secure the drums and um, allows me to print with consistency, uh, even though, you know, every, I, you know, these drums are all like unique and beautiful in their own way. And, uh, but to be able to 
print an edition of these uh, and have them look, you know, consistently printed. You know, that was the that was one of the challenges for me. So maybe that answered the first question. Carbon tree background now. <laughs> Thank you, though. So then I guess um, to kind of wrap it up, we can show the technology center and then a little bit more of the shop. And then if there are any final questions, we'll definitely answer those as well. So in the technology center, we, you know, with the money that we received, we purchased a laser engraver, which isn't in here just because of the venting issues. Um, we also have 3D printing capabilities now, uh, a large format scanner that we can either use to document the prints that we work on, or if an artist happens to have a large drawing that we need to scan so we can transfer it to um, you know, a plate or something like that. Uh, we also have a digital plotter that we use a lot for um, prints that have any collage elements in them we can use a vector file and cut shapes out. So this is a shape that is being cut for the next Derek Adams piece that we're working on, um, another party guest image. And then we also have a dry mount press to mount any of the collage things that we do. We use an acid-free dry mount material that actually is on the back of this hat. So it's not tacky until it's um, heat activated and that's all acid free. Um, then we have a polymer plate maker to make relief plates for um, the Vandercook presses that we work on. And that hat is printed on a Vandercook with polymer plates. And we can actually show you that in the back of the shop. Then we also have um, two etching presses. One of our etching presses is a conversion press that we can switch back and forth between litho and etching. But right now it's set up for etching uh, just because we have more etching projects going on in the shop. And this is actually a Judy Fat piece that's being prepared for framing that will go out soon. And then this is our graduate student, Jonathan, who is helping uh, prep prints by Swoon that will be going out to her studio for signing uh, in a, the next couple of weeks. Now we had a question wondering about uh, a master printer program. We do not have a master printer program at Tandem. Uh, I know that Tamron does have a program, uh, but we work with graduate students that are in printmaking at Tandem. Uh, and every year we have a project assistantship that we provide. The, I think, you know, Paula may have covered this at the beginning, but the, the kind of general idea at the beginning of Tandem's uh, setup was that graduate students could see the collaboration between printers and artists um, and see how artists take ideas that they've got in their studio and you know bring them to a print shop versus like in school they're working on their own work and kind of you know learning how to conceptualize things so they you know Bill Weege wanted the experience for the students to see um, how collaboration could kind of come together uh, and so then this Vandercook right now is actually set up to print the the small Derek Adams party hat that was in the in the digital lab so I can just print one of these quick. And so you can see that there are crop marks 
on this plate, which is a relief plate, so it's a raised surface. Uh, and those crop marks are for the cutter to be able to read where this shape is at so we can then cut the party head out. So ink is placed on the rollers. The, the rollers oscillate to even out the ink film. And then you would add ink to the plate. And then you place your paper in at the top. And there's just a little foot pedal that lifts up grippers that then hold the paper in place. And then I can show you. Hey, we, we had a, we had a question about the swoon piece that we saw very quickly. Wondering if you could tell us a little bit about the the process behind that. Yeah. Um, and while you're walking over there, I'll put in a plug. Um, swoon is doing a picks list for us from the Fine Art Print Fair, which will be uh, published on Artsy tomorrow. So this is a dimensional piece. Uh, there are six layers. And so there is lithography, screen print, uh, gold and copper leaf, and then Swoon will do a little bit of hand painting on the, the print as well. And so we use the, the laser to cut out all the shapes that go together to make up the entire print. So Just to kind of show you one run that is, I believe, the second from the bottom layer. And so each layer had to have the same amount of prints pulled to be able to build it up into that. And so like this area here, that's all copper leaf. Um, and that's also in some of the smaller diamond shapes. This is gold leaf. And then the hand painting in the face will be done by Swoon when we send it to her studio. I see that we are getting kind of close to the end. Is there any other questions that people have? We had a question, which is probably more for Paula. Is Paula nearby? She is. Yep. We always have many questions about um, how artists come to you and how you find artists to work with. How do these How do these relationships begin? How did you find Jeffrey? How did you find Swoon, Callie? Um. Well, we. Um... We have a uh, we have a board of advisors. We have an artistic advisory board, um, and then of course we have many artist friends who have come to the press. And so we um, uh, heard about Jeffrey's work, and everybody was intrigued. And um, then uh, the artistic advisory committee were the people who uh, were talking about him. And then we all followed up and um, we managed to convince Jeffrey to come. So we are so happy that he did come to make a print of Tandem and this incredible drum. Perfect, thank you. It, it is um, the top of the hour now. So I wanna thank you Paula and the team and Jeffrey for sharing your process and your time and your thoughts with us. This has been absolutely amazing. And we hope to see everyone tomorrow for uh, a session that we're doing with the Print Council of America and IPCNY with Mark Thomas Gibson and Elizabeth Rudy from Harvard Art Museum. Um, thank you, Paula. Thank you, Jeffrey. Thank you everyone for being a part of this. And I would just like to thank you, Jenny, again, and Sherry. I would like to thank the IFPDA and I would like to thank the staff who work here at Tandem Press. 
They are um, an amazing group of people. And it is, um, as I said earlier, one learns something new every single day in a creative uh, space such as this. And I would like to thank Jonathan who, for being one of our graduate students. And, um, and we, will, we have one at the moment due to COVID because we can't have too many people in the studio, but we will be increasing that number. But thank you all, and thank you all to all the supporters of Tandem. This has been a great pleasure, as has been the whole month of the various um, lectures and demonstrations. All right, see you. Thank you.